Hey guys, my name's Aaron from Geeky Limit Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. In this tutorial, this is one of three in a mini series on creating a web view application within the Swift language. What we're going to be covering is the ability to display different websites within our application and having web view controls to be able to control the web view, such as going back, forward, refreshing, and even stopping. We're also going to move on to create a search bar within the web view so we can search any URL or any website we want and display it within our app. Before we finally move on to creating an activity indicator to display activity to our users all from within the web view. So I hope you are excited just as I am and let's jump straight in to the first video on creating web views within the Swift language. Okay then, so to set up our web view, I have my project already set up. It's a simple single view application for the iPhone and I've simply named it Swift Web View for the purpose of this tutorial. Now to create our web view application, the first thing we're gonna do is jump into our main dot storyboard. From within here, we're going to set up our interface ready to create and display websites within our web view. So if we have our view here, make sure we select our files owner. I'm going to change it from the inferred size straight to the larger iPhone screen. As you go in there. Then all we're going to do is simply go into our objects list and just simply quickly find our web view within the objects, which is just around the bottom, I think it is. There we go. We're going to drag and drop that in. And I'll make it full screen just for the moment. Now, before we add any constraints or any other objects from the screen, we're going to set up our web view to make sure it's working. So the first thing we're going to do is bring up our assistant editor. And then once we've got this up, I'll just resize it so you can clearly see. I'm going to space out the top section here where we add our outlets. Here we go. So space it so we can clearly see what we're adding. And we select our web view and we either right click or control click and drag it over into our um, view controller.swift class and drop that in. From within here, we make sure the connection's an outlet, and I simply name it Web View, making sure we have that in and connect that up. So we've now linked an outlet to our Web View so we can refer to it and get it to display certain websites from within it. So also, I'm going to make sure we scale in pages to fit. Uh, if you don't do that, then your website is all pre or pre automatically zoomed in. So this is not great if your website you want to display is not designed for mobile applications. So if you do scales to fit, then it will load the website in its full glory. Okay. So once we've done that, we can close our assistant editor and go back to our standard editor. Now the next thing we need to do is quite important. Now with the newly updated versions of Google security settings Apple have implemented within iOS 9, we now need to make our application not restricted to certain web access. And what we do is head over to our info.plist. From here, we're gonna add a new line. And what we're going to add is our app transport security settings, and we're going to allow it to load arbitrary websites. So anything that's been restricted in the past, uh, we can now open up our application to show all different websites. Uh, off the top of my head, I think it only allows Google or Apple their own websites, uh, but you can open up the whole unrestricted web access by doing this. And how we do this is type in app transport security settings there. I'll just make it a bit bigger so you can clearly see. And from within this, we're going to then drop it down and then click the plus symbol to add a new line. And we need to allow arbitrary loads there and make sure that's on the Boolean and selected to simply display yes. So we need to allow it. And we're just going to command B and build that. So it's now in our project. Okay, so now we've done that, we've allowed our application to have unrestricted web access to any websites that we want to load up. We're now going to get it to actually load a website up. So we jump into our view controller.swift where we have our outlet for our web view, which I'll just close up all this space now. Now how you get to load is when the view loads up. So as soon as the application loads and the view loads up to our user, the web view is then gonna load up, providing we've got internet access or an internet connection, uh, the website that we set. So we're gonna space out our view did load section where this is where all the code performs when the view first loads up. And the first thing we're gonna do is create a let to hold our string of the website that we want. So we type out let space, and we're gonna call it URL, which will be the URL of the website we want, space, and that's gonna simply equal our NS URL. And then that's gonna be equaled to our string, which the string is gonna be the website that we want to load up. So we're gonna keep it nice and simple. We'll do HTTP 
colon forward slash forward slash and let's go with www.google.com nice and simple and we end that there with a bracket so now once we've got our string of our web address set up into the letter of our url we can then transfer it over to load up within our web view so again we create our second let and this one's going to request our url to load up ready for our web view so we simply call this one request and that's going to equal our ns url request we do our two brackets there and in between them uh, the url that we're going to want to load up so we do url colon and we referred it or named it url itself so that's lowercase there we go we need one bracket on the end so now the, the ns url it's going to request is our url let which that's equaling our google.com uh, web address string so now we've got that we can get that request and place it within our web view so we get our web view then we do dot load request and the request is going to load up is what we called it request so it's all referring back to itself and we need to make sure on the url here i've just missed it out that we put an exclamation mark there for our optional wrap there we go so again it's all referring back to itself we have our web view and that's loading a request the request is going to be loading is our request which that's equaling to an nsurl request which again that's again equaled uh, to our url which our URL is equal to our string of google.com. So it all refers back to itself to load it all up within our web view. So now if we go to build and run, we may ch choose the iPhone 6 plus simulator here. And once this loads up, depending on how quick our internet connection is, depends on how quick the website's gonna load up. And you can see there, it's pretty quick. We've got um, Google loading up straight away. So what we do now, we'll change the websites up. So if I get rid of it there, let's try my own. So geekylemon.com, we're going to then load that up into our web view. And again, depending on how quick our internet connection is, depends on how quick it loads up within our web view. And you see there, it loads up that full screen website uh, within it as we selected it to load up full screen websites if they're not designed for mobile devices. So there we go. Now, the problem we have is when we go to interact with the website itself. For example, if I selected one of it, you see here, it takes us to this page, and then once we're on this next page, we're kind of stuck there, and we can't really do anything. Uh, we can't go back, we can't go forward, we don't have any web view controls. So now we're going to move on to creating and adding web view controls for our web views. So back within our project, we're going to go to our main.storyboard. And the reason I didn't add any constraints in to make this application work on all device screen and types is because we need to add in some more objects. So at the bottom there, I'm going to free up a little bit of a space and we're going to scroll right down to the bottom where I'm going to add in a toolbar. There we go. Now I'll move our web view back down so it's touching it. And from within the toolbar, you can see if I drop it down, we have an item. This is a UR buy button item. I'm going to copy it and paste it so we've got four in there all together. Then what I'm going to do is place a flexible space bar item between uh, the two there in the middle. And that kind of just pushes them over and separates them. So no matter how big and small the screen gets, uh, they're just simply going to resize and move about, and they'll always have two on the left and two on the right. Okay, so we're going to set our first one, and you see it says items, it's got a piece of text from within it. We can change this up from what it's simply displaying. So in the custom item or the system item here, we change it from custom to a specific preset icon. Now you can choose to add in your own image. Uh, you simply get rid of the text there, anything like that. But we're going to give it to the nice preset custom ones. So we need a back button, a forward button, a refresh, and a stop button. So we're going to start with the rewind, which is our go back button. Move on to our next one. This will be our um, fast forward button, our forward button in the web view. Our next one, let's make this one our refresh. See, there gives us our little refresh icon. And then finally, we need our stop loading button. These are four basic web view controls that you see in all browsers. Okay, so we've got those in, we've added those in, and again, you can choose to add in your own images if you want to customize it yourself and change the tint color of them. We're going to keep it as it is, but how do they know what they do? How does the refresh button know that when it gets clicked, it's going to refresh the web view? Now, we don't need to add any code for this. All we need to do is link the button to the web view and tell it what, well, basically, what's its job. So you can either right click and control click on your rewind button and drag that over to our web view, and then you're given a list of four sent actions. 
Now the rewind button is obviously our go back button, so we select that. This means now when we press our go back button that it will make our web view go back to the previous page that was loaded. So repeat the process now for the remaining ones. This is our go forward, our refresh, and finally our stop loading. Okay, so we've got all those four in now. We've linked them all up. The last thing we're going to do is select our web view and our toolbar at the bottom. Go to our constraints here and simply add in some missing constraints. This means when the web view resizes itself, such as to the smaller iPhone screen size, you can see it resizes perfect. If we go back to the large one, there's no problems there. So no matter what application um, the device is running on, such as the iPhone, the iPad, it all resizes the objects to work perfectly on all of them. Okay, so now we've finally done that, we're going to go straight to build and run, where we can now test out our web view controls. Okay, so once it loads up, again, depending on how quick your internet connection is, depends on how quick the website will load up. And once you've got it up, we can simply press the refresh button, and that will refresh the page and load it up once more. You see, it's pretty cool there. We can go to a different page within our um, web view, and when that loads up, we can simply press our go back button, and it takes us back to the first page, and even takes us back to the second page when we press our forward button. So there we go, we've simply created our web view to display different websites within our application, which is great because we want to display content to a user, they never have to leave the app again, and even given web view control, so that when they dive deeper into the web pages within the website, they can control it and go back and forth and even refresh or stop loading the um, screen or web view all itself. So make sure you keep a lookout now for part two, where we're going to be adding in a search bar so we can search websites directly from the application. Hey guys, just before you go, I'd like to thank you for watching this tutorial. And if you did enjoy it, make sure you click that big like button down below. And if you'd like to further your knowledge and progress within iOS 9, Xcode 7 for Swift 2 and Objective-C, where you can learn how to create 20 real life applications. Links for these will be below in the description of the video. And if you'd like to learn iOS development on the go, then make sure you check out one of our many iOS applications where you can learn how to create applications again within Objective-C and Swift. The links for these will also be in the description down below. Now, I'd just like to say one last time, if you did enjoy this video and it did help you out in any way, make sure you hit the big like button down below on the video and make sure you check out our website, geeklemon.com, where you can find the full source code for this tutorial and all the others we offer. And make sure you like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter so you can keep up to date with what's coming here at Geeklemon. So once more, let's thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.